So Game Porting Toolkit 1.0 has just released. This is the full version of the software. It's no longer in beta. And if you didn't already know, Game Porting Toolkit is Apple's method of running various Windows, DirectX 11 and 12 games on the Apple Silicon Mac. We can get games like Jedi Survivor, Cyberpunk 2077, Hogwarts Legacy, etc. working on the Mac for the very first time. And unfortunately, we don't have a change log, so we don't know specifically what has improved. Apparently, games like Counter-Strike 2 now run better through Game Porting Toolkit than they do through DX. VK, and it also seems to have fixed memory leaks with Batman Arkham Knight and also games like Armored Core 6. However, it's hard to figure out if there are any more improvements, so I'd really like to see after you've installed Game Portal Toolkit 1.0 what kind of improvements you've found over the previous betas. And today what I'm going to be doing is to give a full tutorial about how to integrate Game Porting Toolkit 1.0 into Crossover. So I did a video about how Crossover 23.5 now integrates Game Porting Toolkit, but that is the old version. So if you want to use the new version, then you're going to have to use CX Patcher in order to integrate Game Porting Toolkit 1.0 into Crossover. There's also some new features of CX Patcher which is going to make it very useful for running multiple versions of the software and I'm going to go through all of this in the tutorial today. So the first thing I'm going to do is to click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you click the link and make a purchase then I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description we'll be taken to the store page or you can go to codeweavers.com and click on buy now. I do recommend making a purchase or which comes with 12 month support. If you want to get a discount, then make sure to use the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New and just apply here, and then you're going to get a 20% discount. And right now you can get a 23% discount if you use the coupon code GameMode3. This is valid until October the 17th. And anyway, once we're ready, you can click the Buy Now button and then you can go ahead and fill out your details. Alternatively, if you want to try this out, you can also go to the Code Weavers website, click the Try Now button, then you can fill out these details and get a fully featured 14 day free trial. So that's that's what we're going to do today. Here we're downloading Crossover 23.5, which is the latest at the time of recording. So once Crossover is downloaded, we're going to go to Finder and then we're going to go to our Downloads folder. We want to find our Crossover zip file here. So all we need to do is double click. It's going to extract. And then we have the Crossover app here. We're going to drag and drop this and put this into our Applications folder. Once that's copied over, we'll click on Applications, and then we're going to scroll until we find the Crossover app. So go ahead and double click. Here it's saying Crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are we sure we want to open? Press Open. So now we have Crossover 23.5 installed. However, this only includes Game Porting Toolkit version 0.4. And in order to get the latest version at the time recording of 1.0, we need to use something called CX Patcher. So what we're going to do is to shut down Crossover. So click on Crossover and then click Quit Crossover. So I'll leave a link in the description for the CX Patcher GitHub page and on the right hand side we're going to go to releases so click on releases and basically you can have two different choices at the time of recording you've got the latest release of 0.3.4 which supports crossover 22 which is the previous version of crossover and what we're going to be using today is version 0.4 for crossover 23.5 so that's the latest version of crossover with wine version 8 and also official support for game porting toolkit however crossover 23.5 supports an older version of game porting toolkit this one is going to update support to game porting Toolkit 1.0, which is the latest at the time of recording. So simply all we need to do is expand the assets section and then click on sixpatcher.app.zip. And then we're going to go ahead and download this. Press save. And then within our downloads folder in Finder, we're going to double click on cxpatcher.app.zip. So cxpatcher, I'm going to drag and drop into your applications folder. And we're going to scroll down and find cxpatcher. So double click on this. If you get this message, just press OK. So we're going to hold down the control key and then click on cxpatcher and then click open. And then we're going to open this manually and bypass the security check. So in order to enable cxpatcher, we need to type in this entire field here. Typing here, I will not ask code weavers for support or refund. And just be aware that using cxpatcher modifies crossover and you'll be using it at your own risk. Press agree and proceed to continue. Next we need to configure our settings. So to understand what this is going to do, this will modify DXVK Molten VK and as long as we have this toggle on, it's going to integrate Game Porting Toolkit's D3D Metal to play DirectX 11 and 12 games through this method. We also have a new toggle here which is use separate bottle paths. So basically if you wanted to use different bottles in different versions of crossover, that's an option. And we're also going to allow repatch and upgrades. So basically this means that we can revert it if we wanted to. With crossover, I like to to test things out. So what I'm going to do is to duplicate crossover by copying and pasting it into the same folder. And what I'll do is rename them accordingly. So I'm going to call this one crossover 23.5, which is the original. And this modified one, I'm going to call it crossover 23.5 CX patcher. And with these settings turned on, I'm going to drag and drop this. And because it uses a separate bottle path, that means our installed software is going to be in separate locations. And so if I launch this, it's going to launch different bottles from the original. So I'm going to drag and drop this into CX patcher. And it says here crossover.app has 
has been successfully patched, press continue, and that's basically done. So what I wanna do now is to launch my crossover, and this is launching here. So this is now completely fresh bottle location. So what I'm gonna do now is install the launcher. So I'm gonna type in the word Steam, and we're gonna install Steam. Press install, I'm gonna download Steam. Here we're gonna press yes to the fonts. And then now we have the Windows version of Steam up and running. I'm gonna press next, and then install in its default location, and then press run Steam. So this is now updating, just let that finish. And once you've installed Steam, you can see that there are quite a few advantages. For example, if we control click and look at the C drive, we can see that the CX patched bottles are actually located in the user folder instead of the application support crossover folder. So they're in separate locations now. So within Steam, within crossover, we're just going to enable V3D Metal and also eSync as well, which is going to help performance in various games. So we're going to relaunch Steam now. So now we can go ahead and sign in with our account, either with the sign in here or scanning the QR code with an app. So now we're logged into Steam and basically we can download the Windows versions of various games. So what I want to do today is to test out the game Jedi Survivor. So we're going to go to the store, we're going to get the game Jedi Survivor here. So I'm going to buy this game, click purchase. So now we're going to install content and press install here. Accept the end user licensing agreement and then it's going to start its download. So it's 130 gigabytes, might take a bit of time. Once the game finished downloading, we're going to go ahead and press the play button. And this is going to go ahead and launch the EA installer. I'm just going to minimize this and then I'm going to press let's go. So if we have this issue where the EA app installer doesn't continue, what we're going to do is to go ahead and close crossover and Steam. So just go ahead and close both of these and just close the installers and make sure everything is closed here and then what we're going to do is to install an application into the bottle what we want to do is do a search for the ea app and then we're going to find ea app for steam and this is going to install what's called the cross tie so various dependencies that need to work in order for the ea app to work correctly so now that's installed we're going to go ahead and reopen steam then we'll go ahead and launch jedi survivor again and then we're going to press play to launch so here I've got the metal HUD. You can just go ahead and ignore that. And I'm just going to go ahead and type in our email and password for the EA app. If you don't have one already, you can go ahead and create an account. We're going to go ahead and press play. That's going to go ahead and launch. So just be aware that at first launch, it might take two or three minutes for the actual Jedi Survivor window to come up for the first time, but it will come up eventually. And it's going to be very choppy on the menu. So this is going to be because of optimizing shader files. And it's going to go through an explicit process of doing this. It's going to take a few minutes for this to complete so good idea to wait for this to finish once it's done it's going to feel a lot smoother so don't worry so generally i'm really impressed with how jedi survivor works on my macbook pro with the m1 max chip it runs far better than jedi fallen order did using crossover and dxvk even with all of the multi vk fixes from the past i barely experienced any kind of stutter however we are running this on low settings with fsr2 set to quality mode nevertheless this is really not bad after all this is a direct x12 game running through D3D Metal from Game Porting Toolkit 1.0. It's translating all of the Windows graphics API calls into macOS graphics API calls on the fly. And it's also running through the x86 Rosetta 2 translation layer, running all on Apple Silicon hardware with the ARM chip. Also, the PC port of this game hasn't got a very good reputation. However, it seems to be working pretty well on my Mac, especially on these opening areas. So overall, very impressed especially with Game Porting Toolkit 1.0. So anyway, that's how you get the latest version of Game Porting Toolkit patched into Crossover using CS Patcher. Big thanks to Crossover for developing the software, Apple as well for making Game Porting Toolkit and distributing it for free. Also big thanks to the developers of CX Patcher, Italamandara, and also X, who are instrumental in getting all of this to work. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.